Hello, Facebook. Oh, let me see if I can alter that camera angle a little. And it's Tuesday, the 16th of August, and I think I'm live on Facebook. I'm just waiting a few moments just to see if anyone's going to join me. Yes, I've got someone watching, so that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, usually I get an icon, I'll just wait and see if I can see who it is, I'm not sure. But say hello, comments are allowed. Um, I've got my comment setting on, so if you're watching live, please feel free to comment, say hi. Uh, a couple of people are jumping on now. So hello and welcome to this Facebook Live. I'm Izzy Shishinsky. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in uh, Nottinghamshire in the UK. Oh, hi Maxine. I can see Maxine's joined me. Um, yeah, so I'm here in the UK and um, I'm just going to share with you a cute project I made at the weekend using some additional products that have been added to the celebration offer this year until the end of August and actually just before I I've had such a busy day but just before I came on live I thought uh, how can I demonstrate some of the other items because I actually already have them and I'll explain that in a moment so I made three very quick cards so I'm going to share those with you as well. In fact, I've not finished them. I've prepped them, so I will be finishing them. Um, so hi, and let's get going. What else have I got to say? Oh, I always share with you things that have made me happy since I was last here talking to you and crafting with you. So the most important thing that's made me happy since I was last here is yesterday I spent the afternoon with uh, mum, well, my husband, Oh, hi, Andrew. Thank you, darling. <laughs> That's the first time he's watched me live. That's so funny. And he's in the other room. Hi. I could probably just lean out the window and shout. <laughs> um, yeah, so I spent the afternoon with Hubby, with my lovely mum up in Skipton, and my nephew and his fiance who are here from Australia and I haven't seen him for years and it was just so lovely. First time I've met Melanie and it was just such a lovely afternoon so that was the best thing this week so let's crack on and do some crafting so first things first i'm going to put my specs on then i can actually see what i'm doing spin the camera around so bear with the wibbly wobblies here we go let's just see and i'm using my um favourite camera holder. I'm not using my new portable one or my newer portable one. I'm using my favourite one because it's nice and stable above my desk. So just wanted to run through with you um, that Stampin' Up! have added uh, 10 more items to Celebration. They actually added them at the beginning of the month. So I have posted about these on my social media feeds. Um, but I wanted to run through them because these items are not just exclusive to the Celebration brochure these are items that are available in our printed catalogues already but they've been added to celebration which means that you can get these items for free with a qualifying spend so what does that qualifying spend actually mean where we've got gold um, circles that means if you spend 45 pounds you can pick one of these free items for free where we've got this um, turquoise or silver um, circle then if you spend 90 pounds then you can pick one of these four items for free and today i'm going to demonstrate a set of dies and some brushed metallic card stock and i'm also going to show you three three really simple cards using the three embossing folders so let me just share with you the embossing folders let's go from the top the embossing folders are the timber 3d embossing folder so that's this one and I'm going to try and just see if I can highlight that by putting some colour underneath and then you can maybe see the camera can pick that up so that embosses like a timber that's one and that's in the annual catalogue the seashells 3d embossing folder and the gingham embossing folder and all three of those are actually in the annual catalogue. The first two are 3D embossing folders and the gingham is a regular embossing folder, so it's not as thick. 
Um, we also have two packs of metallic cardstock. So the brushed metallic, which has um, gold, like um, uh, old gold and a rose gold, and they're brushed metallics. I'm going to be using those actually on the Lumiere bag that I'm going to show you. I'm also going to use the aspen trees. But the other um, metallic foil pack is the silver foil speciality pack now both of these are actually in the annual catalog so three embossing folders two packs of different metallic card stocks are all in the annual catalog the aspen tree dies which i'm going to share with you are in the mini catalog but the other dies that you can get for free are the daffodil dies the flower of home dies flowers of home dyes and the dots and stripe dots and spots even die that's just one die that stands on its own and the other final item is some craft gift boxes and they're in the annual catalog so those three dies are in the annual catalog as is the craft gift boxes the aspen tree dies however were on my wish list as soon as i got the um, mini catalog the seasonal mini catalog um, because anything with the robin on and I switch off Grinch mode and I, I'm happy to do Christmas because I just love a robin so I loved the stamp set straight away I also really liked the sentiments I actually really like these sentiments a lot um, your kindness warms my heart is ever so nice you can just use that as a thank you card wishing you abundant joy and peace no matter the season I'm here for you now Wishing you abundant joy and peace, Christmas. That's That really tells me that's Christmas. No matter the season, I'm here for you. I think that's really nice. You know, you've got a friend who's going through a bit of time. You can make a lovely card um, with that sentiment. And then let heaven and nature sing. Well, that is just a really adorable sentiment. I absolutely love nature and love birds. So for me, that, that sentiment can be used on any card I can pop a bird on. And I intend to stamp and colour this bird in many different ways so i'll have garden birds to share with you in a future video but i loved the dies and i'm just going to share with you the dies on the page so that's page 46 Oops, so there's a stamp set that matches now the aspen tree dies are actually 34 pounds on their own but as a bundle it's 50 pounds and 25 pence and that's for the stamp set with the matching dies however if you purchase the stamp set on its own which is what i did so i purchased the stamp set on its own bumped up my order with lots of other consumables and bits and pieces and then i got the dies for free um, because until the end of august they're free so that was fab so i just wanted to share with you where they are in the cut all these items in the catalog so that's 10 extra items until the end of august available for free with various different levels of qualifying spend so i want to share with you before i move on to this is the main item i'm going to demonstrate today which is a paper bag lumiere so I actually popped one of those battery operated tea lights inside and the video I posted on my social media feeds yesterday or was it Sunday um, actually shows it flickering away there. But it's, it's quite a simple project to make, but I do have some tips about how to actually just use the dies to cut the front of the bag without cutting the back as well. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. That's the main project. But I also wanted to share with you very quickly, and I'm going to take a seat. Oh, hi, Sylvia. I can see you've hopped on to watch. Nice to see you. I'm going to just take a seat so I won't see comments for a little bit. I wanted to share with you how you can make simple cards just using embossing folders and um, a sentiment. And then how you can add a little bit, you can step it up a little bit with some extra bits and bobs. So first thing I did was I had a rummage in my cardstock drawers. And often when I'm cutting cardstock to make cards, I'll only use half a sheet and there'll be the half sheet left, which I immediately score, pop back into the packet of cardstock. So I've got a card blank there ready for next time. So what I did was I had a rummage through my cardstock and I pulled out three of those such card blanks and here they are so i've got um balmy blue i think this is um polished pink 
and this one is Orchid Oasis, I think. Um, so they were already cut, and this one's a landscape card. So what I'm going, what I then did was had a look at the three embossing folders. So I already had um, these two, and I need to say that these two, the gingham and the wood grain, or the timber. I think it's wood grain. Is it timber? Or is it wood grain? I need to have a look now. Let me look back at my. What have I just done with the fly? It's here. Let me have a look at the fly. What's it called? Timber 3D embossing folder. So I had the, um, I already had the timber and the seashells, but I wanted to say that the um, gingham and the timber are actually sort of standalone dies, if you like. They can be used on any project. The seashells um, embossing folder is part of, uh, I want to say a suite, but it's not a suite, a bundle or a collection. It was part of a suite originally. And I'm just going to look in the annual catalogue. No, I'm not. I don't need to. I'm going to share with you that it, there is a matching stamp set. She said reaching across to her shelf and trying to find it really quickly. Despite the fact that they all have... Where's it gone? Goodness me, pictures on the spine. <sighs> ah, there we are. Ah. Friends are like seashells and there is a matching die set. However, I wanted to share with you how to make, if you just got the embossing folder and you didn't have the stamp set and dies, if you have stamp sets with sentiments, which you will all have, how you can make a very quick, easy card. So I'm going to choose to use the Barmy Blue card base. I've pulled out some copper metallic foil cardstock. Now, that is on the Speciality Papers page on page 139 of the annual catalogue. Our 12 by 12 foil sheets come in packs of copper or gold, and you get two sheets per pack, and they are 12 by 12, so they do go a long way. Um, so I pulled out a piece of the copper. I thought that complemented the Barmy Blue cardstock base really nicely. And I think you'll agree that that's embossed absolutely beautifully. So just on its own, I'm going to stick that down to the card base. And I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue because if I run a tape runner across, you could use tear and tape, but if you put pressure on the back of an embossed piece um, with a tape runner, then the danger is that you'll squish some of that embossing. That's beautiful, that raised image. I'm going to stick that down to my card base. So already I've got a really pretty card. I will say take care with liquid glue and foil cardstock. The first blob of liquid glue that you get onto foil is really difficult to remove. You'll start rubbing it, you'll start marking it. So just take care. Then I thought, let's add a sentiment. How easy would it be just to pop a sentiment onto this card and we've already got a greetings card there, good to go. Then I thought, let's just jazz it up a bit. I've got a snip of ribbon in my um, ribbon scraps box. And if I just, and this is the pale papaya, and I think it goes really nicely with that um, copper. So I am going to press down with some stamp and seal, but we are not going to see this bit underneath. So I'm going to actually add some stamp and seal piece just a bit of dry glue there so what I mean by dry glue is not wet glue so not liquid glue but a dry tape glue and I'm just going to take my ribbon and cross it over just a really simple way of adding ribbon to cards let's just pop that in the place I want it just anchor that down and I'm going to add my sentiment across there and I'll pop that up with dimensionals just really easy and I chose to place it there because there are no seashells up there there's just a piece of sort of frondy seaweed so we're not losing any of these beautiful seashells and let's pop that sentiment just in, in that corner and we can shorten this little piece of ribbon now it was just from the scrap drawer so nothing to lose just using up those scraps and there we go simple really simple card that could be a card for a gent if we 
uh, maybe if we left the ribbon on or maybe if we chose a more neutral ribbon or a piece of twine or it could be a card for a lady and I think that looks really effective the foil cardstock embossed looks really beautiful so that's card number one dead simple card number two was that pretty pink um, polished pink colour and I thought let's emboss um, I'm going to do this one landscape as well, but tent style. Let's emboss some of that um, really super. So this is out of the rose gold speciality um, foil cardstock from the annual catalogue. So you actually get six sheets in this pack. It's 12 by 12 again. You get two of each and you get an iridescent, a matte and a metallic. Uh, really beautiful rose gold and I've chosen to use the iridescent and I've embossed this one using the timber 3d so I'm going to again just pop that straight onto the card base I really liked this because the iridescent one picked up the um, pink colors from the polished pink card base so again I'm trying to be careful not getting any Oh, and I needed to just say, this card base was one that was in my drawer, and it was a tiny, tiny bit shorter than a normal card base. So this time, my matte layer, which are all the same size, so 10 centimetres by 14 and a half, just fits. So this card is not quite as tall as the other, so we're about half a centimetre, but I thought, do you know what, I'm going to use it. it must have been popped back in there for a reason. So... Just again, card base, layer of embossed metallic, looks really pretty already. And I thought, let's stamp, let me tell you where I've got the sentiments from. So the first sentiment, happy birthday, was from Peaceful Moments, a great sentiment set in the annual catalogue. This sentiment is from Splendid Thoughts. So let's celebrate. I just really liked the feminine script on that one. I thought I'd pop that down there. Now, I spoke earlier on a post about um, a card I've made. Now, everyone must have a bits box, either on their craft table or... I've got a really big one, but inside that big bits box that has layers of things, you know, sort of um, maps and layers that I've maybe embossed earlier or cut to size and didn't use... But inside that bits box, I've got boxes like this with bits that I've stamped, punched, never used um, for various reasons. Maybe some bits that I've die cut and never used. So I was thinking some of these, some of these pretty flowers that I've stamped and um, punched using a punch I've never used. I'll pull some of those out just to jazz this card up. Now let me have a look. Let's see. So that's quite a nice little sprig of leaves. Just having a good old rummage in here. What have I got? And I've stamped the sentiment actually in Evening Evergreen. So just for something a bit different. So you can see some of the bits and pieces in here. I think we'll just go with that. Let's just maybe let's just maybe pull out another couple of leaves in the different green. So we've got a couple in I don't even know what colour these are I think that might be shaded spruce and this might be evening evergreen so we'll just pull those out and we'll have a look at those and we'll see how we can pull this card together so let's pop a sentiment on there and we'll pop it up on dimensionals really quickly just um, this time I'm going to whack the dimensionals into the middle so I can actually poke some of those sprigs oops oh, and I should say I've just used a punch I've used one punch for all of my sentiments, I've used this punch. And for this one, I've made the sentiment smaller. So I've punched it, and then I've fed it back three from the top, and I've made it a bit smaller. For this one, I actually punched um, across. So I put my cardstock in and punched across. You can see the curved sides. And for my last one, I've punched it full size. So let's pop that sentiment, I don't know, maybe here. Give ourselves some room to pop some of these flowers on. So already pre-stamped, coloured in using, um, I think, I've, yes, I can see the bleed through. And you can see that I've used the emergency side there as well. So I've used um, stamping blends, the alcohol markers on those. 
And anything with foil cardstock, you need to just persuade it to actually stick it because it's not as absorbent as regular cardstock. So you do need to just hold your pieces in place for a few seconds just while they get some good adherence. Let's have a look. Pop another big one on there. Oh yeah, I've definitely used the emergency side on this one. And these, I know these um, flowers have been sat in that bits box for, I reckon, I reckon over a year actually, just thinking about it. I often use little bits and pieces on gift tags. Let's just make sure we can still see the sentiment. As you can see that glue just needs a little bit more persuasion the wet glue when sticking to foil you can use um glue dots for better adhesion but i'm going to pop this card right to one side once i finish so it will dry off i'm just not using very much glue I'm just popping some of these leaves just underneath the flowers let's pop that right underneath just a bit of extra color Yeah, we'll just pop one more on. I might just nip that bit of branch off and just have the leaves. And these are die cuts that I made um, last week when I was actually making that mini album. And they, they were on the cutting room floor. They didn't make the final edit, as we say. So there you go. Another really simple card using an embossing folder and a sentiment. And then just having a rummage in your bits box and seeing what you've got kicking around in no time at all. And my last card, I'm going to use that gorgeous um, Orchid Oasis. And this time I've embossed with the gingham embossing folder just onto some brushed gold. And this is the um, foil card stock that you can get free until the end of August with a, an order of £45. So again, I'll use some glue and just stick that straight down onto my card base that was already languishing in my cupboard pre-cut and scored didn't get used for the project earlier so just being resourceful here looks nice oh one thing i was going to do there and just forgot to do but no worries i'm going to finish this one off with some of this chunky ribbon this is the natural finish ribbon um, a nice natural color and i'm going to use some twine some of the baker's twine and this one is in crumb cake i think and i chose to use this sentiment from peaceful moments these are the moments we'll look back on with joy and i thought this would be a nice sentiment to use on a card when you just maybe want to i thought i might maybe write a card i was talking to tom yesterday my nephew and we were talking about sending handwritten letters again and he admitted that being a bloke is pretty rubbish at correspondence and um, he said he promised that he would try and get better at writing and I said it's so nice to get a proper letter so you know I might send I might print off a photo of us that I took yesterday and pop them in a card and send them so I really like that sentiment to go with photographs and scrapbooking um, but equally on cards so what I was going to do is actually I was going to put that ribbon um, around this card base and just tuck it under so I'm going to see if I can um, just rescue myself here I just cut that just a little bit wider and let's see if again using my take your pick tool I can just open up a gap there to slide my ribbon under Let's just see what we can do. So, here we go. It's a bit of a rescue mission. Let's see if I can tuck that under. Yeah. I'll get that under there. Oop. I'll get that under there. And what, I, what I might just do is actually pop some tape under there um, when I finish the live, just because it might, 
better. I'm just going to, or I might just pop some underneath. So I'm going to use some tear and tape for this one. Let's just pop some underneath the ribbon itself onto the card. And ordinarily tear and tape would not be my go-to tape glue because I tend to just look, get my knickers in a twist with it. I much prefer a tape runner. But many of my um, class attendees and customers really love tear and tape. So, you know, I feel like they're setting me an example and I need to practice. So we're all craft us together here so there we go a bit of tear and tape let's lay that let's lay that across and one thing i do like about tear and tape is it's quite forgiving and you're going to see exactly what i mean in a minute yeah look it's fraying this ribbon let's just try and poke that under i'm going to try and use a different tool just because this is covered in glue so i might just try and use my bone folder which is not covered in glue I'll poke that under there. So it's quite forgiving in that I can now just adjust that a little bit. I'm going to pop my sentiment on. So already we've got a simple but really pretty card or an effective card. Now I'm going to add a little bit of twine. Now I can simply tie a bow and stick that on with a glue dot. But what I am going to do is I'm going to lift that and thread that under. That's what I mean by forgiving. You can lift it and reposition it. Oh, it's like threading a needle. Where's it gone? There we are. Don't worry, it might look like a mess, but honestly, it's going to look fine once I've done it. And now I'm going to tie it and pull it, and it just gives a bit more texture to that ribbon instead of it being completely flat. That ruching, just pulling that ribbon together, just gives it a little bit more texture. And I think that that's really improved it. So that's what I mean by being a bit forgiving, that tear and tape. It's not stuck fast. You can't move it once it's down. And don't be afraid to boss your cards when you're card making. You know, you can be the boss. So I forgot to stick that under. I've bossed it. I've told it who's boss and I've altered it so again just a really simple effective card using those embossing folders that you can get for free till the end of August let me just have a bit of a tidy up and share with you so one punch for the sentiments but three sentiments look very different three different embossing folders some really pretty metallic cardstock let's not forget that we've got pretty metallic cardstock and it doesn't just have to be for a snip or a punch of um of a leaf or a flower we can actually use it um, on its own as a layer and it looks super when it's embossed really nice so i hope you've enjoyed having a quick look at those very quick cards and we'll get on with the main event let's have a look at this paper bag lumiere which i made at the weekend so um a little while ago my lovely friend lorna brought me a crafty gift of some craft paper bags. I don't know where she got them from, but she's a scrapbooker as well as a card maker and makes some fabulous projects. And she'd made me a beautiful um, memory keeping album and she'd used these paper bags as pages inside. And I said they were lovely, I really liked them. And so she brought me a few. So I thought time to have a go with them. So here they are. They're a nice finish. They've got, um, yeah, just a really nice sort of smooth finish on them. So what I wanted to do was use the, um, let's get them, Aspen Trees dies. And in the dies, you get two lovely leaves that also emboss the veins on the leaves. You get this piece that cuts, and I've got a cut off somewhere in my bits box. Let me just grab it. One that I cut from just some evening evergreen, I think, or it might be, yeah, no, Mossy Meadow cardstock. And this can be used to build up a tree from the tree branch. So you get a tree branch as well, and the outline of the bird. So if you're wondering, if you get the dies and you're wondering what this is for, it can be used to build up the tree. So you layer it and build up a tree. So you can use the dies um, 
pretty much on their own with the exception of the outline of the bird you can use the tree trunk on its own as well um, although there are coordinating stamps in the stamp set and then you get this huge piece which we're going to use for the front because that cuts an opening um, or an outline of birch trees which is just beautiful so first thing you need to think about is which way is the top and which way is the bottom and if it helps we've got the branches going up when you look at it from the cutting blade side and if it helps you to remember you can take a marker pen and put a T for the top or maybe an arrow just so that you know when you're laying it down on a project that you've got it the right way up now the next challenge I had was how to cut the paper bag without cutting both sides through so what I did was the first thing I did was and here's when I started earlier was I found myself something that I could slide inside that wouldn't get cut through now you could use a piece of and I had one earlier somewhere um thick card board gosh I've buried it Oh, here we go. You know the cardboard that you get inside your um, DSP packets? You can use a piece of that. However, I chose to use a piece of um, plastic and I got it from a notebook. So I've got these notebooks. These are what we use at work. And when they're finished, we have to shred the insides. And I'm often left with these covers and thought, what can I do with the covers? So I got myself a notebook cover and I chopped it into bits and pieces so I'm left with different bits different sizes I cut one down so it was just wide enough to slide inside the bag so then that gives me a surface inside the bag that I can die cut and you can see I've already done lots of die cuts with this and it will stand a few more before it goes in the bin and at the end of the day it was only going to be thrown away originally so I've slid that inside my bag and I chose to slide it in the side that's um, so the base is folded to the back and I chose to use this side as my front so then I can place my die carefully on top but then I had another problem now this is thicker than a normal piece of cardstock with the die because we've got that piece of plastic inside so that your normal layers on your cutting machine are layer one platform one platform two and then cutting plate, cardstock, die, top plate and that was way too thick to wind through so I knew I had to reduce the sandwich. Now if you're not using a stamping cut and emboss machine and you're using another manufacturer's machine you will need to play around with the layers yourself and the layering I came up with um, for this project was um, a couple of shims of the um, notebook cover so a couple of pieces just cut to size and I think then I had this and then I had my top plate I think I think that was the I think that was the um, sandwich I'm just going to cut it and I will come back and correct myself I'm sure can't remember whether I removed this one so let's just go to the cutting machine I will fetch it to the actual demonstration table I've got some sentiments just in the way let me just move those so let's just see if this is the correct oh you need to take care to position the die so it's nice and central so you've got enough um let me just lift that up so you've got it all in so you've got enough of a gap or the same sort of gap at either side and I just pulled mine down so that I went over the first crease so it gave me enough room to decorate the top so let's just make that sandwich and see whether that's too thick. I have a suspicion I might have been just misleading you. Oh no, it's not too thick. I need another shim in there. So that wound through. So this is what I mean by experimenting. That went through really easily. So I'm going to go back and get another shim of cardboard. And just lay that on top. And that's feeling too much. So did I have certainly didn't have a bottom layer because that would have been too thick how many shims did I have that's the question hmm. I think maybe I just did have another shim let's just try that and see how we go 
I think I actually had another shin, but I think it was thicker than that one. Let me just see if I can put it and buried it on my desk. I think I've put it to one side and buried it under all my catalogues. So let me just grab one here. Some of that cardboard that you get in your packets of DSP is different thicknesses. And I've got one here, another one here that's a different thickness. Just ever so slightly thicker, so I'm just going to change that for that. And that is, I definitely had one of those somewhere on my desk. Let's just, let's just start that again from the front. And let's pop this shim on top. But you do have to experiment. Now that's feeling much more like it. That's definitely cutting. So I think that's what I did. You do just have to experiment with the different thicknesses. Because all you're doing when you're winding through your um, stamping, cutting, and emboss machine or whatever stamping and cutting and embossing machine you have, all you're doing is actually putting with the sandwiches you're putting pressure on the roller at the top and the bottom and you want the rollers to actually squish and cut through so let's have a look no that's not cut through so that's a really great demonstration i've clearly not got my layers sufficiently i wonder if i took that out and did that with these and did a top and a bottom let's just line that back up again And just line that back up and bring my machine back in note to self make a note to self about what you actually did Izzy but I think what this does demonstrate is that you do have to mess with your own machine and get the right um, number of layers to give you the right pressure to cut through but I do know that just using the regular layers and I'm going to switch to a different bag rather than try and line that one up so here we go with a fresh bag. So with that front, rather than the folds at the back, with my piece of plastic, you could use a piece of cardboard, but just experiment with what you've got. Now I've put, um, I've taken off layer two. I've put um, a clear plate, two shims, and I'm going to put a top plate on, and let's just see if we can get that to go through and that feels like that's too thin as well so did I have a card on the top just keep experimenting hmm, that's good put your die on <laughs> put your die on top did anyone see that I hadn't put my die on top oh mum you're saying you're back where have you been Ah, that's feeling okay. Where have you been? There we go. So, let's recap. Finally, platform one. Take off platform two. Use a clear plate. A couple more thin shims from whatever you've found. Your bag with the shim inside or your protector inside, you'll see when I bring that out, it brings out quite a lot of the pieces. Your die on top and a clear plate on top and run that through. But like I say, just experiment with your own cutting machine because even if you're using a stamp and cut and emboss machine, the calibration of your machine may be slightly different to mine. So now we've got the bag with just the front cut. We've not cut through to the back the bag intact it's really a simple matter of decorating and adding some vellum to the inside so we pop the bag open and at first I thought I was going to put some window sheet behind and maybe color it but I decided I would use some vellum I really like the vellum look in with the vellum inside I'm just going to see if I can pop my original one I've got the just a battery operated tea light, whether this will show up in daylight well enough. Whether you can see that through the vellum, but it does look really pretty and it just, the vellum just looks really subtle. So the way I stuck the vellum was incredibly carefully. I just put some tape glue along the top 
tape glue along the bottom and a little bit down the sides and very carefully just fed it through. So I'm going to do that now. I'll use stamp and seal and I'm just going to use a little, a little dab just there, a little dab just here. And we'll go a little in the middle here. A little in the corners and just a little bit down the side and you'll notice on my um, on my original you can see that these branches are not adhered to the vellum I decided not to try and do that because I just thought I'd end up in a gluey mess now what you do have to do is operate some care and caution when you're feeding this in because of course that's tape glue and it will want to stick as soon as it touches I'm going to feed it in and then when it's in place I'm just going to nip it and then I will fold it flat back down to the table that gusset at the back and give that some pressure so I know that that vellum has um, stuck down nicely behind so there's my bag it can be folded flat oh and if you get any of the tape glue I've just noticed in the light you can see a little bit of the tape glue there just shining if you get any of that and if you've got a glue rubber you can remove it with a glue rubber carefully or you can use your stamping um, emboss buddy and just add some of that powder to the front and it will just stop it from sticking to, to other things there's only a tiny bit showing so now I want to decorate the front I thought it looked really pretty and I thought this, this Lumiere would look really nice for Christmas with the robin stamped and coloured and added to the front. It would look really lovely. You could stamp a Christmas sentiment on it. But I wanted to demonstrate what you can do with just the dies because it's just the dies that are free till the end of August. Um, not the bundle, just the dies. So I'm going to cut some metallic, using some of the brushed metallic um, card. I already had a pack of this so I've got some bits and pieces left and I'm just going to use so I've got the copper and the gold and it looks like I've got a nice scrap of gold there and I can cut maybe a couple of those smaller leaves one big leaf using the coppery colour so I'll just cut that out roughly with a pair of scissors and run that through the die cutting machine just for speed we'll just bring that over here and grab all of the correct platforms that we should use and get rid of some of these shims so platform one plate number two bottom cutting plate cardstock with die cardstock with die top plate and we'll just wind that through And I want three leaves, so I'll have one large one and two small ones. Let me just remove that one from the machine, just pop that back on. And we can come backwards towards ourselves. And we've got three really pretty metallic leaves. Nice autumn project. You could cut, of course, your leaves in any colour. If you wanted a spring project, you could make it a spring project. This would look really pretty with blossoms. You could make some blossoms. I know silver birch doesn't have blossom, but you know, artistic license. Now to attach the leaves tag to my original project, I simply glued one leaf on top of the other and then that one like that and then punched a hole through the lot so I could use some twine. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's just use some stamp and seal on the back of there. And pop that leaf on top. This one on top. Like so. And we'll just give that some dimension by curling those leaves around a bit we'll just give those a bit of a curl 
it just gives it a bit more dimension than flat leaves now I've got a single hole punch here which I'm just going to pop a single hole through and then I can add some twine to that and I used again that lovely broad ribbon did you know you could stamp on this ribbon so we could stamp a sentiment on there um, if we wanted to and we can use some linen thread this time. Let's have a look for some linen thread in my little bag. And so I simply measured my ribbon so that I knew it would go round. With the bag closed, it would go, flip that then you can see how much, around and leave me a little bit of a tail so I don't need quite so much or about there I'll cut that on an angle because it always looks nicer when it's cut on an angle and then quite simply I left it so it was actually loose like a belly band so I can remove it and add the tea light and then close it back up and just have that so it was actually on so it needs to be tight enough that it's not going to fall over but not too tight so I'm actually going to lay this bag flat again so I've got I can boss it a bit so I'm going to put them both together and I'm going to tuck them like that and now where I've tucked them I'm going to do something really simple and just staple right in the middle so that holds it together and those leaves are going to cover up that staple by some twine my twine's really wiggly <laughs> oh there we go so my linen thread and we'll just poke that through the hole doubled over pull that through slip the tails through Dead easy and then we're going to do the same as I did on that last card and just tie that round so lay one tail underneath and we'll just tie that and pull that tight and that should pull up and hide that staple it certainly did with my other one anyway so let's pull that tight and tie that in a bow quite simple just a really simple way of finishing that top off now you might not like that frayed look I quite like that sort of distressed and frayed look makes it look a bit country bumpkin it is a very fray ribbon this one I quite like that again it gives it texture so now you can see that that um, ribbon belly band if you like I mean we've just got some tails standing up there let's, let's, that's a bit neater just slides on and off so I can slide that off I can open the bag up I can drop in there one of those battery operated tea lights or two I mean this bag would take a couple easily two or three if you wanted a, a brighter look then I can close the top pinch it closed and add that ribbon back on the bag of course you can close it up entirely you could use this as a gift and you can move that to the side you can have that in the middle you can position that just exactly where you want it. Um, you could use this as a gift bag if you wasn't using it as a Lumiere. Or why not a Lumiere gift bag? Why not add a gift as well as a, a tea light? That would be quite cute. So that's how I made my paper bag Lumiere. Cutting through the front of the paper bag and not the back. But the one thing that you do, and I think I demonstrated that really well, if not in a very fumbly fashion how you need to just mess with your own machine and the thicknesses um, altering the thicknesses of your sandwich to suit your own machine so it just does take a bit of messing about but you can use scraps you can use so I've let me just grab it again um, I've used scraps of this card backing card in different thicknesses I've used this thin plastic um, notebook covering in various sizes I used it for inside the bag and again you can see this has been used several times so it's all wibbly wobbly but it unless it's actually cut all the way through it should last another few cuts 
definitely and it's just something that would have gone in the bin and um, been disposed of so let's use things like this in our craft room to good effect i hope you think so so that is the end of the demo today i'm going to just tidy my desk a little um, i've just got glue on my fingers and then i'll spin the camera back round bear with me let's see let's spin you back round and say goodbye and i think that's been a really quick demo actually today there you are fabulous so thank you again for joining me um if you've joined me ooh, a bit, there we are um thank you for joining me if you joined me live today i hope you've enjoyed it if you've joined me on playback then I equally hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I've encouraged you to use your embossing folders firstly to make very effective cards, really pretty cards with just an embossing folder and a sentiment, maybe adding some scraps from your cutting room floor. We all have them um, as crafters. We all have those little boxes and I hope I've inspired you to have a go and use some different materials. So perhaps make a paper bag Lumiere yourself um yeah show me what you've made over on the crafty beehive group page that i set up for any crafters to share any of their makes and um, hopefully i will be back again soon with a live it won't be next week i know that for sure um so yeah i hope i'll be back soon with another live demonstration for you don't forget about all the great things the extra 10 items that you can get only until the end of august during celebration um, so yeah, make good use of the celebration to get some free goodies and I will see you again soon. Happy crafting everyone. Bye for now. Lots of love.